Hey there, Steve Horn with Short Sales Done Easy, coming to you live from Ahwatukee. Just got done with a great buyer seminar uh, over the weekend. Uh, we taught a lot of folks how to take advantage of the market from the standpoint of buying a short sale or foreclosure. The topic that I'd like to discuss with you today comes from a actual listing appointment that I went on um, uh, probably three days ago. Uh, these clients have a first with EM EMC and they have a second with Chase. Uh, the second with Chase is actually a HELOC. So the question was, if I have a HELOC with Chase and I have my checking account with Chase and my savings account with Chase, if I do a short sale and the HELOC wants to come and pull money out from my checkings and my savings, do they have the ability to do that? In most cases, the answer to that question is gonna be yes. You need to go back and take a look at your loan documents that you signed uh, when you made that agreement with the first and the second to see if that is gonna be an issue. We've had it happen before with different clients. Wells Fargo dipped into one of our clients' checkings, checking accounts. Uh, this gal was in true, true hardship and basically what happened was when the HELOC went to collections, the collections came back, saw that there was $10,000 in that HELOC account, or in that uh, checkings account, and they directly pulled it. Now what Wells Fargo and the, HELOC, the collection company did not know was that money was not my client's money, it was an inheritance that was dumped into this uh, checking account to be used for their daughter's college fund. So imagine the shock that our clients went through when they went to pull and give money towards their daughter's let's say dorm room rent and there was absolutely no money in that account. Now we were able to go back to Wells Fargo and have them reimburse our clients back that ten thousand dollars because we were able to prove that it wasn't physically my client's money. It was an inheritance. We had to show a proof of inheritance letter to the bank and they deposit that money. But the HELOC is the challenge and there's hundreds of different ways to overcome the challenge when you're dealing with a HELOC. But if you have a concern and you're doing a short sale and you have a HELOC that's attached to the second, I'm not advising you or telling you what to do, but if it was me, I'd be opening up a different savings account, different checking account with a different bank, so that the bank did not have the opportunity to come and pull that. We can settle HELOCs. You as a client can settle HELOCs. It can be done prior to the short sale, depending on the bank. It can be done after, depending on the bank. Each different case is that. It's a different case, and each different case has a different scenario that you go down. And as short sales continue to, uh, be the way of the market and the banks continue to try to find ways to uh, alleviate their deficiency, guess what? They're going to continue to ask for you to share in the deficiency. You signed a note, you made an agreement to pay off this loan and you know what? In most cases, the bank is relieving $150,000 or $100,000 from you from the deficiency standpoint. You need to know in the back of your mind or at least be prepared that they may want you to come and share in that deficiency. So those are just two scenarios that we ran into. Um, the clients that I met with this weekend aren't going to go ahead and go with go ahead with a short sale. However, they're going to be a little bit more strategic about how they go about it since there is a uh, HELOC attached to this to this short sale. So continue viewing our, our video blogs. Check us out at shortsalesdoneeasy.com. Uh, sign up for our free short sale survival guide. It will give you great insight onto the short sale process and what you're going to need from the banks. And remember, here at Short Sales Done Easy, we do make short sales done easy.